This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. We're going to go through now and look at yet another disclosure standard, uh, and this is all about related parties and it's covered by IES 24. Uh, it's a, it's not a difficult accounting standard like many of the disclosure standards. It's just some simple rules and the application of those rules. But what's a challenge within the P2 exam is being able to identify when related parties is relevant because what happens a lot of the time within question two or three is that the focus is on one particular accounting standard. So it could be on say property, plant and equipment. Uh, within that property, plant and equipment transaction, there is a transaction with a related party. And if you identify the related party within the transaction, then it becomes much more straightforward because then that prompts you to talk about IS24 as well. And once you start talking about IS24, there's nothing too much to say. However, if you don't spot that there is a related party transaction, then all of a sudden you miss the related party transaction and lose yourself a, a few marks. We're not talking about anything disastrous, but you know, you're talking about two, three, maybe four marks that are available for just talking about your related parties and identifying there as a related party and therefore what then needs to be disclosed. Okay. So if we go through and have a look at the standard in a little bit more detail, I think the key bit that you have with regards to the definitions. Now I know they're all listed within the class notes there, but the key bit that you're looking for is that there needs to be an unbroken chain of control or influence. If there is that unbroken chain of control or influence, then you have a related party. So what we've got there, imagine you are the parent company uh, and a parent company will have control over a subsidiary. So it has the power to direct. So very straightforwardly there, the parent and the subsidiary are related parties. Uh, in terms of the disclosure, if there were to be any transactions between the parent and the subsidiary as related parties, whether or not a price is charged on the transfer of goods or the provision of services between the two, it doesn't matter if it's done for free. You just need to disclose the amounts that are involved. So disclose the fact that the service was provided for free. Uh, you will also need to disclose if there was a charge applied. Uh, are there any outstanding balances due between the parties? And also, have there been any amounts that have been written off during the year that were due between the parties? So there isn't a huge amount of disclosure that is required, but providing you first of all spot that there is a related party, you can then go through and talk about what is required between the two, assuming that there has been a transaction. If there is no transaction that has occurred, then what would need to be disclosed regardless is that within the subsidiaries books, they would need to go through there and disclose who the parent company is and, and that it is controlled by that parent company. Because therefore, the subsidiary is showing that there is a related party, that related party is the parent and there therefore have been no transactions. Okay. Uh, so that's talking about control. If we think about influence, so uh, the parent company has influence over the associate. So somewhere between 20 and 50 percent by definition. But remember, it doesn't necessarily have to be 20 to 50 percent. It's all about participating, isn't it? So I think we discussed an example much earlier on, didn't we, within the course where I think we had 19.9 percent. Uh, we still had influence. But from a related party perspective, the parent and the associates are related parties. Be careful as well, there is an unbroken chain of control and influence between the subsidiary and the associate. So therefore, the subsidiary and the associate are also considered as related parties. So if there was a transaction between the sub and the associate, that would need to be disclosed within the accounts. Okay. Uh, you've then got the, a joint venture company uh, and the joint venture company has the venturer, doesn't it? Company A and company B and company A and company B both have joint control over the joint venture company. So therefore, the joint venture company and company A are related parties. The joint venture company and company B are related parties because there is control, okay, albeit joint control. However, do just be very, very careful. Company A and company B, they are not related parties. 
the reason being there is company A does not control company B and company B does not control company A. The only control they have is over the joint venture company and they have that control jointly. Company A and company B are not related parties. So only transactions that take place between company A and the joint venture company or company B and the joint venture company would need to be disclosed within the respective book. So, so do just be very careful there. Uh, moving on, uh, we've gone through and seen some examples within our group accounts where we've had more than one subsidiary. Uh, we've also gone through as well, haven't we, and seen whereby we have had complex groups with the parent sub and sub sub. Uh, so what you've got there is all of those parties are related. The parent, sub one and sub two are all related parties because sub one and sub two yeah, are, are under control. Uh, of the parent directly and uh, that one on the left hand side and on the right hand side that complex vertical group structure uh, subsidiary two is under control of subsidiary one and also the parent has effective control doesn't it over subsidiary two okay so they are all related parties again just be aware subsidiary two there would need to disclose subsidiary one as its parent company and the parent company as the ultimate parent company within the disclosure notes of subsidiary two. And it goes without saying, as we discussed before, if there are any transactions, you need to discuss uh, the amount of the transaction. You need to discuss any outstanding balances and you would also discuss within your answer any balances that have been written off between the parties during the year. OK, so there isn't a huge amount to go through there and consider is that the difficult bit within any question is identifying the fact that you have a related party involved in the question. Uh, moving on just a little bit more, uh, what we've got there, the example that we had at the start, parent, sub and associate, we said they are all related parties. Other related parties to go through and consider uh, will be key management personnel, so a director. Uh, they are if you like uh, directly involved with the parents aren't they they have an element of control uh, so they are by definition a related party uh, also a close family member of the director so the director's wife uh, the director's partner uh, any children of the director they are all related parties of the parent company and therefore of the group okay uh, and finally, as well, if there is a post employment benefit plan. So if you have a defined benefit pension scheme and there is a company pension scheme that is being run, that is also a related party. So any transactions between the group and that scheme uh, would need to go through there and be disclosed. Other bits and just to tie it into what you have within the notes, if you identify the director, uh, of the business as the key management personnel they are a related party and specifically for the directors we need to go through there and disclose any short-term benefits that they may get with regard to their wages their salaries their bonuses any holiday pay uh, any other long-term benefits uh, any post-retirement benefits so any pension that they have with the company that would need to be disclosed and i think as well if memory serves me right any share based payments that are due between the director and the company uh, would also need to be disclosed as well so there are specific disclosures required per the standard to do and related to any directors uh, there is nothing within the standard that says that the pictures of the directors need to be disclosed but you do find in quite a lot of annual reports that there are several pictures of the directors. Why that's necessary, I do not know. Okay, but there we go. They just feel as if it's necessary to show a nice smiling picture of those directors. Okay, it's not contained within the standard. Uh, and then just to finish it off, we're, we're talking about related parties and we've spoken about who related parties are. Uh, it's all about an unbroken chain of control and influence. Just be careful if you identify a supplier a customer, a bank or the government, they do have influence, don't they? OK, they have influence over the business. Uh, you know, the bank can, if you like, close down your overdraft facility. The government can impose restrictions within the business. Uh, if you have a supplier, maybe as a utility company supplying you gas and electricity 
or water, they have influence over you with regards to if they cut off your gas and electricity, your business might not be able to function. But they don't have influence as regards to an, an ownership perspective, do they? So there's not influence in terms of the power to participate in the operating and financing decisions. So therefore, the key bit there is that they are not related parties. So there will be no disclosure required of anything that happens with your suppliers, your customer, your bank, the government, your utility companies. So do just be aware of that little bit there. So as we went through and said, the standard itself isn't too difficult. You're not going to have to do the disclosures within the exam. You're going to have to identify a related party and discuss what needs to be disclosed. The difficulty that you have within the exam is identifying that there is a related party within the scenario because you're too focused on talking about a specific accounting standard and your related party transactions your related parties don't enter into the thought process. So my key is in any question you attempt, always have a quick think as to whether or not there may be a related party involved. Other than that, that's it from another disclosure standard. I'll see you all within the next chapter. Take care. Goodbye.